and straight through the bracket into the post, and this holds it in position. There's quite a lot of flex still left in that post. Um, this reaction video is brought to you by Nationwide Industries. I am so glad that they came on as a sponsor because we legitimately enjoy using their hardware and fence fittings. When it comes to pool gates, we love using both the Trident Latch and the Cornerstone 2 Hinge. Both of these are incredibly durable. Check out Nationwide Industries by clicking the link in the description. All right, guys. Today's video is titled, How to Install Aluminum Pool Fencing DIY at Bunnings. Uh, this might be the second or third Bunnings video we've uh, reviewed, so interesting. Uh, how to install an aluminum pool fence. Let's go. The tools that you'll need for this job are your pool fencing and your gate. You'll need your latches and your measuring equipment. You'll need a hack. So it's important to note, I mean, obviously this video was shot outside the United States where pool codes might be different. So before you rely on videos like this or really anywhere, you'll want to check pool codes in your area to make sure that whatever fencing ideas you have meet the pool codes. So you need a couple of clamps and a couple of blocks of wood. Of course, your safety gear. You also need screwdrivers, your fittings, and some pencils to mark out with. You also need your drill and of course your level. We wanna use black screws for this. So what we've done is taken our screws, we've drilled some holes in a board, we've popped them through, and then we've used a black enamel spray just to spray over them. We've planned where we- You could also just buy black coated screws. I don't know that the cost savings would warrant painting them yourself. And where we want our pool fencing to go. So now all we need to do is run a string line so we get a nice straight line and then we can set our posts. How I'm gonna do this is pop a nail in between the two boards so I don't damage any of the face of the board. And then I'm gonna run the string line all the way down past. Interested to see how, how they attach it to the wood here, the wood decking. Typically that's not going to be a super strong connection. I mean, you're relying on a natural product, the wood, uh, to support a safety structure. So let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Pass where the fence is gonna end, just so I get a really nice straight fence. So our string line's now set. So we're gonna set our first post in. Make sure the base of your post. All right, that's interesting. So they sell uh, pre-welded posts with a, with a plate or what they're calling a flange uh, already manufactured on it. Really nice for the DIY crowd that doesn't have access to like a fab shop. Uh, I like that. Not in love with the size screws they're using here to attach it to the wood decking. They don't seem uh, they don't seem that large. I would be worried about the structural support that these these uh, screws are rated for. I mean, the point of having a safety fence around a pool, or in this case, a hot tub, is you want to keep kids out of it. I have to think there's other kids out there like my kids, and I've got a four year old son that is absolutely a tornado when it comes to trying to get into things. I, these screws would not last very long uh, with if he was intent on getting in here. I think you would want to look into some larger, longer fasteners. Is parallel to your string line. This will ensure that the fence is nice and square when you finish. My first post is set. So if the string line is attached between two decking boards on one side and then between the same two decking boards on the other side, couldn't you just ensure that that was placed on the same decking board in the same line uh, without placing the string line? I don't know. That might have been an unnecessary step. But if there's one thing that we know that people want to see in these videos, it's string lines. So maybe they, maybe they get the similar comments that we get in ours that uh, if you don't see a string line, it's not done correctly. Even though in this instance, the decking board is the, is the string line to the straight edge. To get the measurement to my next post, I need to measure the length of the next panel. And then I need to allow a little bit of clearance and then we'll mark the post. Yeah, that's a good point. So making sure whatever measurement the panel is that you add an additional margin to that just to make sure that the panel will fit in there really nicely. It's not too tight. You don't have to trim it down. I mean, because typically the brackets used, I mean, you, you could add easily, you could add a half an inch to the overall measurement of the panel and that bracket would still take up that gap, but give you some wiggle room just in case your posts aren't set perfectly plumb, which... In this instance, it would be really easy to shim one of those one of those flanges or plates uh, to plumb up the post. But anyway, great tip. Total panel width plus, depending on your brackets, half an inch or so ought to be, put you in really good shape. 
Now that the posts are in, we're just going to pop a couple of blocks on the ground. This will hold the fence at the right height, then we can pop the brackets on. Now that the fence is on the blocks. So that's what I mean, you'd want to make sure, you know, those blocks are probably 4 by 4s which actually measure 3.5 by 3.5. Uh, you'd want to make sure that that 3.5 inch gap under the fence panel meets your local pool codes. Flip the brackets over the end with the flat side facing your post, and then we're going to fix it on using two screws that's provided. So that's kind of interesting. Most of the aluminum we install, you know, doesn't come with brackets. Um, it, they're typically installed in punched out posts. Now the steel that we install does come with brackets, but kind of interesting to see how different fit systems are installed in different parts of the world, or this might be a brand specific type thing. Provided in the kit. Now that I've fixed the top bracket on this side, I'd like to fix the top one onto the other post, and then we'll fix the bottom ones. Now it's time to fix our gate. To do that, we just take our hinges and we place one at the top and one at the bottom of the gate. We're going to fix to the gate first and then to our post. So obviously this is in a different part of the world where brands are probably different. Um, it looked really close to the hinges that we like to use nationwide industries, obviously, but they make a cornerstone two hinge that looks really similar to what uh, they're using here. And then to our post, it's just a lot easier that way. The point of the hinge is it's self-closing. So typically most pool codes, most all the ones that I'm familiar with require that the gate be self-closing and self-latching. The idea is so that if a kid runs out of the pool, the gate will shut securely behind them to not let another kid into the pool. Now that the hinges are on the gate, I'm going to put the blocks down on the ground to lift it to the same height as our panel, and then I'm going to screw the hinges onto the posts. If you're doing this job on your own, it's a really good idea to use a clamp to hold your gate in place, and that way when you go to screw the hinges, you're going to get it nice and square. We're just going to put a post in here and then we're going to finish the fence the whole way around, just repeating the same process. We're up to our last panel. We need to cut this panel. There's only one thing you really need to think about when cutting your panels, is that the bracket takes up a little bit of space between the pole and the top part. So you need to allow enough room that the bracket can fit on between the pole and your post. Otherwise, you need to cut a little bit off both ends. I'll just measure the gap that I've got left. So that's an also a good point. When you're cutting it, we typically like to not start at one side. We typically like to cut evenly. So step in one picket and then make our cut in that opening. That way the, the picket spacing is even on both sides, uh, if at all possible. If you start at one side and cut the other, you could be left with a standard spacing on one side of the panel, but then a really tight spacing on the other side of the panel. It's an aesthetics thing. It's not a structural issue, but it's one of those steps that'll make a big difference long term for just a little bit more effort. And then I'll come back and measure my panel. I'm going to transfer my measurement now onto my panel, checking that it's not too close to the uprights and using a white marker so it's easy to see when I cut it. This could be an optical illusion, I suppose, but it looks like the spacing is going to be much different on one side than it is on the other. I'm going to cut the panel now, so I'm just going to pop my safety glasses on and we'll get cutting. Now the panel's cut, I'm just going to pop my brackets on and repeat the process we did earlier, screwing the brackets onto the fence. I'm now going to install the gate lock. It fits on the inside of the gate. Again, brands are probably different where you're watching. Uh, we prefer the Trident uh, pool latches. Nationwide also makes an aqua latch that's fairly popular. We like the Trident 10 inch. And with the knob at the top, so that way the kids can't lift it and access the spa. I've now fit the top bracket. I'm just going to check the length of my latch again before I fit the second one, just to make sure it's in the right place. As always, check your instructions before installing any of the hardware for your gate. Now we're going to fit our lock onto our gate. All we have to do is pop two brackets onto the upright. I've got my first bracket on now. I'm going to put my second one on. Looks like a pretty similar installation method, so I wonder if it's different brand names but same manufacturer. Just make sure you always follow your instructions when you're doing this. I'm now going to put the main part of the latch over the brackets. As you can see, we've left the bottom screw because you put a longer screw through both this part and straight through the bracket into the post, and this holds it in position. There's quite a lot of flex still left in that post. Um, typically, they would include set screws that would go from the bracket into the panel to try to tie everything together so you don't see that movement in the post. We're going to fit a catch to the gate now. All you need to do is line up the line on your bracket to the line on the main part of your latch and screw in the bracket and then we'll slide the catch over. 
there's already a screw inside of your catch, so all you need to do is slip this part over your bracket, tighten the screw, and the catch is done. Now that our latch is fitted, all we need to do is close the gate, make sure it lines up, and that it locks nicely, which it does. There's also an option of putting a handle on, but because this is only a 1200 high gate, we're just gonna use our arms over the top, because it's a nice height to open and close it. The last step is to tension the gate hinges. To do this, you take your Allen key, there's little arrows on the top of your hinge, and you just... Same exact tensioning as the cornerstone. So maybe it, it leads me to believe or maybe make an educated guess is probably different brand names, but same parent company possibly. Uh, the cornerstone hinge or cornerstone two hinges, well, and the cornerstone hinges, uh, they tension exactly the same. Tighten both the top and bottom hinges, making sure that you do them both at the same tension so that the gate free shuts on its own and locks. Just in case someone leaves it open, this will ensure that no children can get through the gate. So now that the fence is built and the gate locks perfectly, that completes all the structure around our spa. All that's left to do now is decorate the back wall and fill up the spa and we can enjoy our party. Well guys, I think the installation went really well. A couple differences that we would do here in the States maybe. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, what you would have done differently or maybe what you absolutely agree with that they did. Uh, Always appreciate you guys leaving comments. I love interacting with you guys in the comments section. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.